So in this video, I'm going to be tackling the most difficult room in the house to clean, the boys' room. Basically, it was absolutely trash during the two-week April holiday. And I'm not going to lie to you, I've been avoiding it. Every time I walk past and the door's open, I just close the door. But I'm going to suck it up and sort it today because it needs doing. And once I've got the floor space clear, we're also going to have a massive declutter of all of the clothes and toys because there are way too many. So we're going to find loads to donate to. So if anyone else is in the same situation as me, don't worry, we've got this, we can do it together. And if you don't feel brave enough to face it today, save the video and you can get it done when you feel more up to it. I just want to make it known now in case anyone was wondering, my boys don't actually sleep in this room, it's more of a playroom. If they actually slept in here, it would be a completely different story. But because I have so many other daily messes to clean everywhere else around the house, I leave this room sometimes. Because I can spend all day cleaning it, the boys will be in here for an hour and it will look like this again. So I'd rather focus on keeping on top of the rest of the house and then just doing a big clean in here when I get the chance. I always try to do a declutter every few months as well because I find it really helps keeping on top of things. We did a massive one at the start of the year and for the few months after that it was so easy to keep on top of this bedroom but it's got to the point now where it's just, yeah, you can see. Rudy's just recently turned seven as well. So he has a lot of new things that we don't actually have space for yet. So yeah, hopefully I can find a lot of things that we can donate. I think I've said this on another video on here before, but it's so important to me that my children know just how fortunate they are to have all the things they do, and that it's so important to give to others who don't have as much. Gratitude's a big one for me. If you don't try and practice gratitude daily, it's really easy to become disillusioned, even when you've got so much in your life because you can become numb to all of the blessings in your life. And something I really don't want to happen is for my kids to turn into I'll be happy when people. I've said this before. People who are never happy with what they've actually got in the moment and who are always striving for more and for the next best thing. Learning to be happy with what you've got is so important. And look, I recognise my children have got so, so many toys. And that's why this is such an important issue to me. Because they have so much it's a lot easier for them not to recognise that, if you know what I mean. So yeah, bagging things up and donating things and practising gratitude, they are two big things in this house. I would like to point out as well that the majority of the toys in this room weren't actually bought by me and Charlie. They were bought by very excited and enthusiastic grandparents on Christmas and birthdays, which is the best thing in the world and we're so, so lucky. So now I only tend to buy a few presents myself. This year for Rudy's birthday, I decided to get him something educational because I knew he'd get toys and fun things from everybody else. And yeah, he's been having piano lessons at school, 20 minutes a week, which is not very much. So me and his dad decided to go halves and get him a piano keyboard. And that way he gets to practice what he's learnt at home. I just thought that was a lot more valuable than me getting toys as well. So yeah, I think what makes the room look all the more messy is because there are so many little toys scattered around. But luckily, they all have their own little boxes. I've got a good little system going on here. We've got a box for Minecraft stuff, a box for Connects, a box for Lego. Everything has its own little place and it's just a matter of sorting things back into the right homes. And this wasn't always the case. Before January, we didn't have any of these storage boxes. So you can imagine the chaos and how completely overwhelming it was to try and tidy this room. And now, even though, yeah, it still is a bit overwhelming, it's nowhere near as bad as it was. Anyway, in case you were confused about the sleeping arrangements, Charlie actually sleeps in here the majority of the time and the boys sleep in my room. It's just what works for us personally. Ike still wakes up for milk in the night and Rudy suffers with night terrors sometimes. And so everybody gets more sleep this way. A lot of the time Charlie has to get up at 5am for work and I don't have to do that. So I know a lot of people can be really judgy when it comes to this kind of thing. But I just think as long as everybody's safe and happy... It's got nothing to do with anybody else. Different families do things different ways and I'd never dream of judging someone for the way they do it. Parenting's hard enough as it is without people sticking their oar in and giving their two cents. And I know every parent watching this will have had that experience with someone who's judging the way they parent. And it's just laughable, isn't it? Because until you've lived in that person's shoes and are raising that particular child, because they're all so different and they all have such different needs, but until you've actually lived in another person's shoes, it's not your place to tell them how to do it. Obviously, we are working on and we want Rudy to feel comfortable and safe in his own space. But what I'm not going to do is push him out before he's ready. That's just not me. 
they're only so young for such a short amount of time in the grand scheme of things, aren't they? And at the end of the day, he's not going to be sleeping in my room when he's in high school, is he? I'm sure soon enough he'll be absolutely mortified at the idea. But yeah, I don't know if you noticed, before I started hoovering, I took two black bags out of the room. One was rubbish and one was full of toys to donate, so we've got one bag so far. And my hair started clogging up the end of the hoover bit, so I tried to fix that and ended up breaking it, so that's fab. The reason I even used this little detractable bit in the first place is because I broke the main hoover. I tried washing it because you can't take it apart and it messed with the electrics and yeah. It does still work but it doesn't have very good suction and it only hoovers when you're pushing it forwards and not backwards. So that was very silly of me. But anyway, I'm giving the carpets a good shampoo now. And it was very much needed because the floors were absolutely covered in everything. Paint, chocolate, you name it. And this bit is my absolute favourite bit of the video. Watch the yellow paint come up. Oh, so satisfying. What a sad -o eh? I love it though. I couldn't wait to get the first bucket of water and see how much dirt and grime we managed to get up. We don't actually get to do this very often because the carpet cleaner isn't mine, it's borrowed. So yeah, I'm always absolutely buzzing to get it done. I meant to mention as well that I actually started hoovering and shampooing the floors the next day. Just because after all of that picking up and sorting, I was done mentally that day. And I wanted to spend the rest of the day with my family. I thought I'd done enough for that day. I've said it before, but I really struggle to find balance being a mum. You know, with work and then daily household tasks and spending time with your family, spending time with friends. And then on top of that, trying to make time for yourself and for your hobbies and for downtime. My hobby is this, it's making videos. So I'm really fortunate in the sense that the daily chores are also part of my hobby. But yeah, sometimes I get really consumed with things I'm passionate about and I have to remind myself to snap out of it and be present with my family. Because although being creative is so therapeutic to me, my family is my number one priority. So yeah, I'm forever in the pursuit of balance. Anyway, can we just take a second to appreciate how amazing this room is looking, how clean the floor's looking? I am so happy. I just hope after the declutter's done, it's easier to keep on top of again. Because it's just becoming an unmanageable amount of mess at the minute. And so quickly too, like I said, all it takes is my one-year-old coming in and being let loose on the room and it's just a disaster. I feel really sorry for my eldest as well because he has all of his little things organised. Then Ike comes in and just trashes it. And it's difficult because it is his room too and he's just playing. He doesn't know any better. But yeah, we're hoping for a three-bedroom house one day. Because as lovely as it is that they'll get to share a room and have that closeness, at the minute, the age gap's just not compatible. They're into totally different things, totally different toys, and at just complete different levels of development. Look at all that grime. Anyway, I decided that was enough for day two, so I just wanted to show you a before and after. Look at it. Amazing. It's like a totally different space. So there's going to be a part two coming up where I sort out this corner... We're going to sort out all the books, rearrange it, make it look neat and see if we can find anything to donate. Then we're going to go through all of the clothes and do the same. I'll also be going into my bedroom where I keep my younger son's clothes and go through them as well. We're also going to go through these drawers and see if we can make those look a bit neater. And we'll do a bit more deep cleaning. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you the motivation to get your space clear too. And I'll hopefully be posting part two to this video sometime next week. And thank you so much for watching.